Tony Dungy from Football Night in America joining us on the show. Big win last night for the Dallas Cowboys. Tony, uh, let me start there with uh, the this, this surprise element. I know you liked the Cowboys last night, but how surprised were you that they were able to win that way? Not, not overly surprised, Dan. I watched the, the first game, the Thanksgiving Day game over, and Philadelphia really sold out to stopping DeMarco Murray in that game. They left a lot of one-on-one opportunities for the Cowboys. Tony Romo was not 100% healthy in that game. They couldn't take advantage of those throws on the outside, but I felt that would be there, and I thought Romo and Dez Bryant, Terrence Williams had a chance to have a good game, and, and that's basically what happened. And Philadelphia turned the ball over. They've been doing that lately, and the combination of Romo being hot and the Philadelphia turnovers, that was the difference. Explain what happened to Aaron Rodgers yesterday. It's hard to say. I guess every now and then you have a game like that. Buffalo has a good pass rush. They've got a a very good secondary, aggressive defense. But I just hadn't seen none of us used to seeing Rodgers miss open throws like that, be just a little bit off target. And Eddie Lacy ran well, but it just wasn't enough. And uh, I think Aaron Rodgers will bounce back with a vengeance this week. You got six teams that could end up as the number one overall seed in the NFC, and one of those teams is not going to make the playoffs. How crazy is this? And do you see the commissioner uh, kind of nudging the owners to vote for another playoff spot in uh, AFC, NFC next year? Well, I think that's what's going to happen because you're going to have a good team, probably an 11-5 and team, miss the playoffs. But to me, this is what it should be all about, where the last two weeks are important. Dallas just had a huge win takes over first place but they've got to come back this week and get it together and play at home against Indianapolis or they could if they lose they could be looking at not being in the playoffs Mm. and uh, everywhere down the line it's that same way Arizona's had a great year they're 11 and and 3 they're going to be in the playoffs but they've got to keep playing for that seating and I I think that's the way you want it I I hope we don't tinker with the system and, and, and put too many teams in uh, Johnny Manziel's debut. Uh, what was he trying to do that you just can't do in the NFL? Did we lose coach? Speechless about John Manziel. <laughs> All right, uh, Fritz, see if we can get uh, coach back. All right. Yep. You know, watching Manziel, there was the hit yesterday in the uh, Russell Wilson, uh, the Seahawks game against the Niners, and uh, that's where you went. That's not good. It was not Ray McDonald hit him, and I did not think that was a penalty. And then they got they kept the drive alive, got a touchdown after that, and uh, I thought that was the turning point there. Went up seventeen seven. Yeah, Paul. The Niners linebacker, I think he's six two. He's hitting a guy who's just under five eleven. You kind of have to to dip your head a little bit so you don't go helmet to helmet. And then he put face into his chest. Is there anything you could do? And and it's almost like you're being penalized for the hard, how hard the hit is, not where it is now. Yeah, I thought it was form tackling there. But you're trying to figure out what you're allowed to do, when you're allowed to hit somebody, how you're allowed to hit somebody. And that was the classic example of, I I understand protecting the players, but you also have to let the defense be the defense. Uh, Hey, Tone? Yes. Yeah, we we were talking about that play, uh, Seattle and San Francisco, before we get to Manziel. That hit on Russell Wilson. What did you think of that roughing the passer that kept the drive alive? It's tough. I I looked at it again on on the replay, and – he does lead, hit him with his helmet, but he's trying to do everything right. He's trying to keep his head up. And what do you describe as the crown of the helmet? Did he hit him with the top? Did he hit him with the face mask? It's just a very tight call, and you hate to see a first down and, and keep a drive when one that leads to the winning touchdown called on a play that's that close. I, I, I kind of agree with you. We're not giving the defenders a chance in some of these situations. Uh, I mentioned Manziel. What was he trying to do? that um, you just can't do in the NFL? Well, he's trying to make plays and trying to give his team a spark. But what people have to understand, your first game in that fast pace, it's different than college. It's different than preseason football. I coached against John Elway in his first game as a pro, his first live game. He completed two passes for negative yardage. It happens. Uh, I, I'm not sure. And I know that's what Cleveland was thinking. Everybody's saying, we've got to go to Manziel. We've got to go to Manziel, get a spark. And they, they held it off as long as they could. It is not easy in those first few starts as a pro trying to get used to the pace and make plays. And, and that's what he was trying to do. He's trying to make plays the way he made them in college. But a lot of those plays aren't available in the NFL. 
Uh, Peyton yesterday, I know he was under the weather, but this offense is changing right before our very eyes. Are, are the Broncos a better team with this offense? Well, they, they could be because they are getting to the point where they're able to run the ball. They have confidence in their running game. Someone uh, texted me last night, what's wrong with Peyton? Well, he threw 20 passes. He averaged 11.6 yards a pass. That is off the charts. So uh, the fact that they're not throwing 40 times, he's not throwing five touchdowns, I wouldn't be concerned about that. When they have to throw, they're going to throw. But I think developing this running game and relying on their defense is going to benefit them in the playoffs. Yeah, I think that that's, that's the blueprint for success that you have to be. We've seen this in Dallas. We saw it with Seattle last year. New England's doing it this year. Have to have that running game. Your defense is so much better. Play action becomes actually play action. Uh, so I, I can see that being beneficial. I just don't know how Peyton is. You Obviously, you coached him for seven years that he wants to throw the football. And does he get frustrated with this style? No, not at all. He, he wants to win a Super Bowl. And if they were losing games 17 to 14 or, or 20 to 17, he would be frustrated. But right now he is saying, this is the way we can win. If we can get people to respect C.J. Anderson and our other runners, when we get in the playoffs and we have to throw, we're going to be that much better. But I, I'm, I'm thinking he is liking the way they're playing right now. Marcus Mariota was uh, in, brought his Heisman in tone, and uh, legitimate 6'4". Um, I, I worried about his uh, upper body strength. He had a hard time picking up the Heisman Trophy. So that, <laughs> I don't know if Mel Kuyper will, uh, will drop him down in his draft. Uh, I promise you this, Dan. Marcus Mariota is a fantastic player. He's going to be a great pro. He can throw from the pocket. I watched him in practice. I watched him in training camp for three years when my son was at Oregon. Not only is he going to be a great quarterback, he's going to be a great person, face of the franchise for whoever takes him. Um, I, I think this is Aaron Rodgers in, in the waiting. Now, here's my concern, and I don't know if you had any of this. You came across this in the NFL. His demeanor, getting in front of the media, because you're, you're going to be asked to talk to the media after every single game, and you're going to be that, that focal person for uh, the franchise. He hates doing it. Um, he's shy. Is that an issue at all? It, it could be if you go to New York or, or someplace where there's just so much on you. But again, if, if he's like Peyton Manning and he goes to an Indianapolis or I'm going to throw in my hometown, Tampa Bay, he's going to be perfect and he's going to be fine and he'll grow into that. But he has no issues in front of the team. He has no issues being the leader that you need to be, that that media stuff will come if it's not a, a market that eats you up like a New York or Philadelphia. If you're the GM of Tampa Bay, you have the number one pick. I'm taking Marcus Mariota in a heartbeat and uh, excited to have him. I'll see you next week. Good to talk to you again, buddy. All righty. See you, DP. Thank you, Tone. That's Tony Dungy from Football Night in America.